Thanks for tuning in to the Red Clinic Podcast. I'm Dr. Shwalin, licensed psychologist and expert in the treatment of eating disorders. Today, we're going to do what we do best and provide education about different eating disorder related topics. Um, I've started a series and I'm kind of in the middle of it. So I've been going over all the different types of diagnoses under the eating disorder umbrella. So far, I have covered anorexia, bulimia, binge eating disorder, and atypical anorexia. Today, I'm going to talk about an eating disorder that maybe you've heard of, maybe you've never heard of, um, and it's typically not really even in the diagnostic statistical manual that we as psychologists or psychiatrists or doctors will even use, but it's definitely something that you need to be aware of. So it's called orthorexia. This is when too healthy becomes unhealthy. So as I mentioned earlier, Orthorexia is not a diagnosis that is officially in the DSM yet. It may be, though. Um, so anyways, this term was coined by Dr. Stephen Bratman. He's a MD um, back in the late 90s. And since it's not a medical term or a DSM diagnosis, it's really a term that just helps us as providers understand the characteristics of someone's eating disorder. So orthos, or so orthorexia when broken up, orthos means correct or right, and orexis means appetite. So it basically stems from a desire for eating that is healthy and pure. People who have orthorexia or show orthorexic tendencies are going to be overly focused and make their life decisions and plans around clean eating or pure eating or being very, very healthy. And the concept of this is that it's so healthy that it actually becomes dangerous. Orthorexia is a usually an eating disorder that we see kind of fall under the anorexia um, umbrella because usually people are very controlled or about what they're eating. They're very restrictive about what they're eating. Um, and they're presenting usually as underweight, as malnourished, um, and extremely anxious about what they're eating. It's not due to a fear of weight gain, though. It's due to that desire for wanting to be clean, pure, and healthy. Now, how is this different? than just like diet culture and what most people are using to make decisions about what they're eating on a daily basis. It becomes different because it becomes an obsession, okay? So individuals who we would say have orthorexia become extremely obsessed with healthy eating or clean eating. These are people who, um, you know, might only eat raw foods, okay, or pick certain um, or make everything from scratch from pure ingredients. So it's, it's a very obsessive. It's, it kind of drives how they live their life, as I mentioned earlier. There's obsessive thinking patterns around food. There's going to be obsessive rituals around food um, and really an inability to be flexible with food. So the person who is experiencing orthorexia, they may wake up every morning at 3 a.m. just to make their food for the day. They won't go and just eat at a restaurant or at a friend's party. They're going to make sure they pack what they are willing to eat and make sure they have something that fits the criteria for clean, pure, or healthy eating. Um, someone with orthorexia may also be very focused on exercise or other ways to cleanse the body or rid the body of toxins. Um, if my friend Melissa were here right now, she would say, why do we need to cleanse our body? Because that implies that our body is dirty to begin with. And it takes away, right, that natural ability for our body to find homeostasis, to balance itself out and to process foods or anything else that we might put in it um, on an, in a natural way. We generally know that people who have orthorexia um, have 
common personality traits. So I'm not saying everybody has this personality if they have orthorexia, but we've learned over time that people with orthorexia tend to have more difficulty with change or transition so that that inability to just be flexible and go with the flow, that's what that's all about. They may be very perfectionistic, um, but they're also really determined, successful, high achieving. It's kind of that type A personality. So they're really, really good at something that they focus on and it can be the reason for their success in life. But because they have an eating disorder, it can also be the exact thing that the eating disorder manipulates, takes advantage of, and then essentially you know, wrecks their life because of it. And so if you think about it, someone who's really good at something or perfectionistic would be really good at healthy, pure, and clean eating. They would put in the effort that it takes to you know, make all their food from scratch or stick to only raw food ingredients. Um, and they would do it to an extent where even if it seemed um, obsessive, it would be okay because it's part of their perfectionistic, high-achieving tendencies. Someone with orthorexia might also be overly worried about mistakes or fearful about loss, death, and health. Um, so, you know, a real-life example of this is um, a client who uh, finished med school, um, finished residency, uh, could be on her way to having a career as a doctor, but instead, because of the knowledge that she has from learning um, about all things related to health in school, uh, becomes super focused on her own health. And that's really common. It's even common with psychologists where we all end up diagnosing ourselves and thinking we have all the disorders that we're learning about. Um, it's kind of a funny joke in the profession, but um, you know, someone who kind of takes it to the extreme may start making decisions about how they're eating, what they're eating, and all of that to the point where it becomes their efforts to become healthy actually end up becoming very unhealthy for them. So I commonly get asked, you know, can orthorexia lead to hospitalization or does orthorexia really need to be treated? Because what's wrong with wanting to eat pure or healthy or clean? Um, and so, like I said, it's when trying to be too healthy becomes really unhealthy. So the point is that there's so much restriction of food groups or certain variety of food that's happening that over time, the person becomes extremely malnourished. And because it's, it's got this obsessive component to it, it's really changed the way they're living their life. So people with orthorexia tend to hang out with each other. Um, there are small pockets and communities of people who, you know, will get together and talk about the latest recipe made out of crushed up cashews and kale. Um, they'll talk about, you know, there's conferences. Um, there was like a 60 Minutes episode a long time ago of someone being interviewed with orthorexia and he would lead conferences um, talking about the benefits of eating grass, uh, wheatgrass, I think it was. And so, I mean, there's hundreds of people there listening to this expert. Um, and essentially, every single person in that audience has some form of orthorexia. Um, and in the interview, the person was actually confronted head on about how emaciated they appeared, how exhausted they looked, how pale their face was, how sunken in their eyes had become. And um, the person was just in complete denial that they were feeling bad or that they had these physical effects of being malnourished because they truly believed that they were being clean, healthy, and pure. Uh, so yes, the answer is yes. People can end up hospitalized because of orthorexia. If the malnutrition gets to a point, they can absolutely end up hospitalized um, and at risk for all the same medical complications that we've discussed before in previous episodes that are related to being malnourished. People can also die from orthorexia. Um, so it's a very serious type of eating disorder. It's very similar to anorexia because of the level of restriction and over control that an individual has. It's just not for the same reasons. 
I was asked earlier if orthorexia is a dinosaur. <laughs> and that's just goes to show how little people know about this disorder and why I'm so glad to talk about it today. Um, now, because it's not a medical term or in the DSM, there are different uh, ways to try to figure out if someone has this disorder. One of those ways is a really great source. Um, there was a orthorexia quiz that actually Dr. Stephen Bratman created. Um, and I think that is available online if you go look it up. Um, and it has several questions on there. And then there's another set of identifying questions that have been published by the National Eating Disorders Association. And that is a really great source also for any type of eating disorder information that you could ever need or want. Um, and so some of those quiz questions or identifying questions to try to figure out if this is something you or a loved one is experiencing are things like, do you spend more than three hours a day thinking about healthy food? Um, do you plan tomorrow's food today? Do you care more about the virtue of what you eat than the pleasure that you receive from eating it? Have you found that as the quality of your diet has increased, the quality of your life has diminished? Um, and then do you keep getting stricter with yourself? So there's a lot more questions. Um, there's like questions about feeling guilt or self-loathing after eating if it wasn't the exact right thing. Um, questions about being on this diet has left you socially isolated from others. Um, and then feeling in control when you're actually eating the things you feel like you should be eating because you're trying to be pure. Now, if, if you're sitting there thinking like, I eat organic or I try to be conscious of what I'm eating, does this mean I have orthorexia? We're really looking again, as I've mentioned before, at the impact it has not only on your health, but on your overall life. How much time and thought and effort is being spent on trying to be pure and is your health or quality of life suffering because of it, then yes, it's very likely that you, you could have this or you couldn't, you know, I don't know the whole picture, but it's, it's something to think about. Um, and there's a lot of pressure in our society to eat healthy, to be pure, to shop organic. And so this can be very confusing. And so all the more reason that if you think orthorexia is a dinosaur in your life, to please make a phone call, to get the assessment, to talk with a professional, because it could be something that you actually truly need professional help for. Now, one more thing I do want to mention before ending is that, you know, individuals with orthorexia tend to have a lot of rules about what they will or won't eat based on that desire to be pure, clean, and healthy. And so that level of rigidity leads to really rigid nutrition. And then what we know about really rigid nutrition, it leads to really rigid thinking. So this is something that, you know, at the Red Clinic and at Next Steps, we really, really hone in on and try to teach our clients is that nutrition and food and mood and mental functioning and uh, quality of life, they're all interrelated. So if we're not getting the right nutrition or the right variety, it's going to impact the way we think and feel. And so the more and more malnourished someone becomes, the more starved their brain becomes. And when someone is brain starved, they start to feel really yucky and they start to not think clearly. And so they may be convinced that the way they're doing something is the only way and the right way and that's it. And if you notice that you or your loved one has become very, very rigid about, about eating and food and in their thought process, that could be a sign that this has gone too far. Um, the treatment for orthorexia is very similar. I mean, I always recommend get an assessment, try to find out if you're appropriate for outpatient or if a higher level of care is needed because of the medical complications we know that are associated with malnutrition. And then you go from there. So thank you so much. That's the dinosaur of orthorexia. <laughs>